Hey everyone, welcome to episode three of the Hollywood Critics Association's new series, What to Stream. My name is Morgan and I'm a member of the HCA and founder of Cinemacy, a website dedicated to independent film. We are without Rama this week, but we are joined by co-host Lupe. Lupe, can you tell the fine people out there a little bit about yourself and your outlet before we get started? Sure. I'm the owner and editor-in-chief of Cinemovie.tv, and we cover everything. So indies, major blockbusters, pretty much all kinds of movie stuff. And of course, we have interviews um, on a weekly basis. So you can also check out what the uh, actors and filmmakers are saying about their latest movies. So let's get started with our first category, which is new Friday releases. And Lupe, take it away. All right. So I'm going to be talking about Cherry. (laughs) Not Sherry, the name. Cherry. (laughs) Um, And it stars Tom Holland. And it's the first film from Anthony and Joe Russo after the Avengers movies. So this is uh, their, their way back into drama. They did a little bit of comedy before then they went into the Marvel. And so now they're back out of this world and they're doing this very serious, dramatic movie. And it's based on a novel. Uh, His name is uh, Nico Walker. It's based on his book. It's a really long movie. It's two hours and 21 minutes. And he basically uh, plays this man, this young college kid, college age kid um, who goes to war and comes back. And he has total PTSD. So he turns to heroin, him and his wife, and they go down that dark path. And it's a very interesting story. However, it's very, it feels long. Um, and feels like three movies. The first part uh, is a love story where he meets his girlfriend and the little trials and tribulations there. And then uh, an incident has him sign up to, for the military. So he signs up, he goes to the Iraq war, he's a paramedic there and he sees uh, all kinds of atrocities. So when he returns, so that's the second half of the parts, like he, the, the war atrocities and what he sees. And then the third part, the third act is he returns and he's suffering, suffering from PTSD and he's a totally changed person. The wife does not recognize him anymore and he's just in deep trauma. And the only way to deal with it is he turns into uh, uh, an addict. So he's shooting up heroin, the wife, because she can't take uh, his PTSD, then she starts doing heroin. So it's this really dark dive into uh, what he's become. And then he turns to bank robbery (laughs) to get money to, you know, get the fix. So it's a really interesting film, but it feels like three different movies and it just feels really, really long. And I was exhausted by the end because it's very, very dark. I can see how it works in a book because in a book you kind of go through the person's you know, stages, but here it just feels very separate. And I mean, I think the whole point of it is to show how PTSD can really change a person. So you don't recognize this character who you started out with. But the good news is Tom Holland, he's showing a lot of you know, range. Uh, he's really, really good. He's very, he has a very magnetic personality and you just have to watch to see what's gonna happen because he is so likable. And he always plays these, you know, he's got a baby face, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think he's trying to branch out and he's doing it really well. Uh, His other movie um, on Netflix, uh, The Devil All the Time, he digs, yeah, he he digs deep into the acting and you can see that he's going to be, you know, a force of nature uh, moving on from his Spider-Man. So he's he's making really good choices right now because he doesn't want to be a cliche or he's a superhero, right? So I think he's really trying really, really hard to take Uh, take on different types of characters. And I think he's really showing a a big emotional range, what he can do. He does it really well. And it makes you really think about how veterans are not taken care of when they return from war, that they're kind of just set off on their own and they don't have any way to deal with it. And that's how you see a lot of the um, veterans turn to to a drug addiction to kind of deal with it all. So, I mean, if you're a Tom Holland fan, you're going to enjoy uh, watching him in this because he's the one that really holds everything together is just really glued to his character because you really want to see him succeed um, in life. But, you know, it takes a really dark turn. So you might be emotionally exhausted uh, by the end of the movie um, because it just feels so long. It's two hours and 21 minutes. So that's probably, uh, yeah. probably why. But A lot of movies, yeah. I think, last year that came out were over two hours long. And I don't know if that was just a coincidence or what, but for a movie to be that long and that heavy, yeah, it sounds like you have to be emotionally yeah. kind of prepared yeah, so be prepared. Like it's, on, it's on Apple TV Plus. So, you know, with the streaming services, filmmakers have 
um, you know, a little more um, freedom to not have to stick to a 120 minute movie. Sure. So they can do a little more, but, and then you're at home, you can pause it and, you know, go get a snack or whatever. So, um, but yeah, it was in theaters last week and now it's coming back, coming to Apple plus. Nice. Cool. Well, the movie I have is a little bit lighter. I think it's a, an animated film and it's called on Gakkau, our sound. And this one, uh, comes from G kids and it was, I guess, stuck in production for over seven years. Oh, finally is making its debut. Um, there's over 40,000 hand-drawn frames and it was animated by the director. It's just this big I mean, cinematic achievement, essentially. Um, and basically the film, yeah, it comes from G Kids. The story is about a group of three high school kids who are misfits, kind of delinquents. They don't like necessarily fit in with their peers. They pick fights with the local other high school, but they kind of want to branch out of their stereotype as being the misfits. And they find instruments one day and decide to be musicians instead. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of the, the premise of the film. They strum one chord and they'll hit the drum to the same beat, same rhythm. And they're like, okay, great, we can do this. Let's, let's uh, play at the music festival. So <laughs> they do that. Um, and there's movie cinematic magic that happens and it's fun. It's like a, a really fun movie. If you like music, if you like rock music, then you'll probably like this movie. It's quick, it's actually 70 minutes. So it's a, a quick watch. Um, and it is streaming on, let's see, it's streaming on Apple TV plus actually too. Oh, they can and do a double feature. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe, I wonder which one you should start with. Probably go dark and then go light. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> Cherry and then on Gakko, our sound. <laughs> that sounds go. good. I'm, I'm into music, so I might check that out. Yeah, and it's this 2D kind of scratchy animation. So it, it's kind of similar to a Wolfwalkers in a way mm -hmm. where it's very mm -hmm. flat. Um, the background look like it's watercolor over just oh, cool. hand-drawn animation. So yeah, it's cool. It's visually very stunning and the music is pretty nice. And so... It's a fun watch. So those are two options for your Friday weekend streamings. Um, the next category we are talking about is something you might have missed. All right. So I don't know why I'm watching all these dark themed <laughs> movies. Or we won't read is, into that. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is HBO Max. This is Alan versus Pharaoh, oh. and it's currently streaming on HBO and HBO Max. And it's a four-part uh, series, and it basically it is one-sided. You hear a lot of people saying it is one-sided. So the first episode uh, focuses on when they met, how they met, the relationship, and it was already odd as you know as soon as they started because Woody Allen and, and at the beginning was like, "I don't like children, I don't want to live with you, I'm not going to marry you," and Mia was like, "Okay, <laughs> oh no, I just and I'm not going to interact with your kids." You know, so he was really out there, you know, stating this is how it's going to be. And she's like, mm -hmm. okay, fine. I don't have time for a serious relationship anyway. Um, and then you see home videos, which is what's interesting about this show is that you see home videos, uh, Woody Allen interacting with the kids. And if you don't know the background, Woody Allen was accused of child abuse to their seven-year-old daughter named Dylan, who was adopted by Mia Farrow. When she mentioned to him, I want to adopt a child together, he said, okay, make sure it's a girl and she's blonde. Oh, creepy. Uh, yes, that is so creepy. Uh, you'll see the home videos with Woody Allen just paying attention to the young Dylan and avoiding all the other kids. And you hear testimonials from uh, people, babysitters and people around the family. You also hear um, taped conversations between Mia um, and Woody when the abuse allegations. And at the same time, when um, that all came out when Sunyi, when he, it came out that he was having relationship, a relationship with her adopted daughter mm -hmm. um, and going in again. I always thought that was like, that is so wrong on every level dating your girlfriend's adopted daughter. Yeah. That to me was a red flag. Yeah. Also, they talk about their movies and how some of the movies parallel some of the allegations. So it's so creepy how they just put things together. Um, and it's, I mean, like I said, they say it's one-sided, but if you see the evidence, not the evidence, but if you see the testimonials and you see the video home videos, um, it, it, 
kind of, I think, really shows that, you know, these might be true. And so it's very damning, I think, for Woody Allen. Um, and the last episode I just watched, he basically gaslit the public. He came out, he was never, he never liked to talk to the press, as we know, he was never mm -hmm. public. He came out and he accused her of being a bad mother and saying that he loves Sun Yi when in the conversation with Mia, he was like, oh, it's just a, a thing. You know, I always thought she would just get a boyfriend and they would move on. So you see how he twisted it Ugh. to show her that she was the bad woman here in this relationship, that she was um, the woman scorned. In this last episode too, um, there was a, what was it? They sent the young girl to psychiatrists and turns out Woody, basically Woody Allen did what Harvey Weinstein did. They got detectives, they got lawyers to go after people, to threaten people. Wow. They got to the doctors, a psychiatrist, for him to come out and publicly say um, that Dylan's account is, is fantasy, is not reality. She was coached by the mom. And it turns out there are no notes. I guess one psychiatrist explained, one child psychiatrist explained that you have to keep all your notes when you talk to children. Mm -hmm. Um, and they destroyed the notes. Convenient. <laughs> and the one that the judge is, that's the reason the judge um, awarded me a sole custody of the kids because he thought, okay, something's going on here. The fact that they destroyed notes and then they just came out on Woody's Allen side. I mean, it's really, I mean, I feel sick to my stomach whenever I watch it. I don't know why I watch mm -hmm. it, but it's just like, <laughs> I want to be informed, you know? Yeah. Well, it sounds so interesting and, and, Obviously, I'm aware of it, but I haven't started it kind of because I, I haven't found the right time yeah. <laughs> because I know it's going to be all that. And mm -hmm. oh, yeah, that sounds heavy. But I mean, it's important to watch, yeah. I think, especially being in this industry and knowing that like, you can appreciate someone's movie. But if the person I mean, that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, I mean, like I enjoyed like, Vicky Barcelona, Christina. I enjoyed yeah. Midnight in Paris. Mm -hmm. um, and the early stuff I didn't, I didn't like because of the whole young, old relationship. Yeah. But if you want to check it out, all the three episodes on are on now. And then next week, it's the, uh, the, final, the final episode. Something you might have missed. So this movie, Driveways, came out in 2019. Mm. And I thought this movie was so sweet and kind of flew under the radar. I actually saw it in December of last year. So I was late to the game on this one, too. Um, basically the story centers around this eight-year-old kid named Cody and his mom, and they spend the summer at their deceased aunt's house because the mom is trying to clean out the house to flip it and sell. The aunt was a hoarder, so it takes all summer to be able to go through everything and get rid of stuff. But the sweet part about this film is that the young boy, he befriends this really grumpy old man neighbor who is a widow and it takes a while for them to get their relationship, a very sweet, not Woody Allen relationship, but a very <laughs> um, <laughs> pure, genuine relationship uh, that builds throughout the film. And towards the end, it's just the most heartbreaking thing because this man is a war vet and he is starting to lose the ability to take, to take care of himself. And so his daughter comes to take him to a uh, assisted living facility. So he's going to have to say goodbye to his home and bye to his new neighbor for the summer, Cody, this kid. And Cody has this emotional attachment to this man. And it's a really sweet movie. It kind of also reminds me of Minari in a way mm. of this family that moves to a very, uh, a place that they're not familiar with middle of nowhere. Um, they feel kind of alone with, I mean, they have their family, but they, yeah, feel isolated and making their home in uh making their home in their hearts i'll put it that way <laughs> and where is it streaming sweet. so this movie is streaming on actually apple tv plus again and oh. uh amazon prime video oh okay all right we're giving a lot of promotion apple tv plus today <laughs> yeah you're welcome apple tv plus <laughs> yeah you're welcome this segment brought to you by <laughs> So our last segment of the episode is a personal recommendation. All right. So, you know, if you've been watching, I like to recommend classics because, you know, uh, they're on streaming platforms. There's tons of, of classics on those streaming platforms. So the one I found that I thought 
uh, might be good for anyone who hasn't seen it. It's uh, West Side Story, the 1961 movie. It's on Hulu and it's based on the musical. And uh, Rita Moreno, she won the best uh, supporting actress. She's the first Latina to win an Oscar for anything. Uh, the first wow. Latino was Jose Ferrer. He was uh, George Clooney's uncle. He was married to Rosemary Clooney. Just a little wow. fun fact there. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, cool. so, and Rita Moreno was actually the original cast, was in the original cast of West Side Story. So they mm -hmm. just carried her in. And um, Natalie Wood played a Puerto Rican. That would never happen today. Yeah, <laughs> nah. <laughs> so they browned her skin to look a little Puerto Rican. Uh -huh. And again, she had a bit of an accent. So, so that might, that might uh, bother some people, but it's a, it's a good movie. She, she did a good uh, portrayal. Mm -hmm. um in that movie and i'm sure most people know the um premise behind it it's a forbidden love in the in the um vein of romeo and juliet it's the street gangs uh named the jets and the sharks that's a pretty cheesy name for a street gang right now that we <laughs> <laughs> maybe back then it was yeah. like oh yeah the jets and the sharks or like yeah. the killer sharks at least or something exactly Not yeah sharks. <laughs> so cheesy cheesy names for street gangs but yet the you know one natalie wood is in one um uh, her relatives are in one gang and obviously the love of her life is in another um street gang so you have a lot of, I mean, there's some classic songs from there that um, people will enjoy. And if you don't know, Steven Spielberg is remaking it. But I can't wait to see what he does that's, that what he does with it that's different. He'll probably keep the name of the Street Gangs, but <laughs> I'm just saying. But that's my recommendation to watch um, that movie. It's a really, it's a, it's a good movie. I haven't watched it in a while, but I just I always remember that movie like, oh, wow. Well, maybe because they were portraying Puerto Ricans. I mean, growing up Latina, we rarely saw anybody in the movies. Mm -hmm. Playing, you know, playing um, Latinos in films. So that's probably why it's so memorable to me. But yeah, Rita Moreno's performance, of course, she well-deserved Oscar. Um, she's just a spitfire in that one and just belting out the songs and the tunes and dancing and uh, stomping on the floor. I remember always, I always remember those dance um, scenes. They're stomping on the grounds when they come face to face. Mm -hmm. The gangs come face to face and, and the women too. So it's, it's a good time. So yeah. check it out if you want some background on the Steven Spielberg movie or just, you know, catch up on a, on a classic movie. Nice. Yeah, good rec. I haven't seen that in a while, so that would be a fun one to rewatch. Yeah. Let's see. My recommendation is also on Hulu, and it is The Truman Show mm. <laughs> starring Jim Carrey. I've been kind of on a Jim Carrey kick lately. I've been watching a lot of his speeches and interviews, and he is such a good inspirational keynote speaker which is kind of funny he's really philosophical and very into mindfulness and the whole thing and i was watching a few of these videos and got inspired to yeah rewatch the truman show the other week and if you haven't seen the truman show it basically uh, centers around a man named truman burbank played by jim carrey who has lived his whole life as part of a reality tv show that's on 24 7 365 he was born into this life and everyone around him is an actor. He lives on a set, but he doesn't know it. And um, yeah, it's a really fascinating movie about, I mean, getting kind of philosophical with it a bit is the reality that you are in, like you, you can create your own reality essentially. Actually the Truman Show was one of the first movies I saw in theaters that I actually remember seeing mm -hmm. and leaving the theater I was very like oh my gosh you know of course thinking like everyone's fake this is all made up that didn't last very long that just was for maybe an hour or so and then I got <laughs> bored of thinking that way <laughs> um but it's a really fascinating yeah rewatch as an adult I'm sure everyone has seen it by now but if you're the one person who hasn't I highly recommend watching the Truman Show and people are always referencing that movie. I mean, I know sometimes people may, you know, uh, make a joke, but it's true. A lot of us always say, I feel like I'm in the Truman Show. Like, yeah, <laughs> I have a bunch of actors around me. What's going on? Yeah, totally. And my, I think right. my favorite part of a movie of all time is when he hits the, like the end of the set with the, the skyline and he just touches the wall and you're like, oh, wow, this is just so powerful. This whole thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a great movie. I really, it, it makes me happy. So yeah, it's a good mood booster for sure. 
Yeah, I remember when that movie came out, it was such a good role for him, but he still got crap from people. I mean, he's trying really hard to venture out mm -hmm. to play different types of roles and people were just giving him a really hard time. It's about uh, Eternal Sunshine of the, what is it called? Eternal Sunshine? Yeah, Spotless, oh, Spotless Mind. Mind. I mean, that was yeah. also a really good performance, but he just never got any cred for doing those kinds of roles. And I just feel bad because they want to, you know, people just want to pigeonhole him into one type of character. Yeah. Um, and I think he's very underrated and I'm glad he got some recognition with his latest show. I think was it a Showtime or HBO? Oh, right. Yes. Um, yeah. Yes. I forget the name of it, but yeah. Yeah. But he was playing, I mean, that character you can, you know, chronicle back to those two, two movies, which I thought he was really, really good in, but he just never got the respect um, that he deserved. And that's so sad when an actor can't be seen like anything. I think that's why we mentioned Tom Holland. Mm -hmm. he knows the, he needs to pick movies that will show his acting range. Otherwise he's going to get stuck in playing the same, you know, characters. And I'm sure Jim Carrey still gets a lot of comedy scripts. He's like, no, I want to do something dramatic. They're like, no. <laughs> yeah. Cause I mean, watching these videos of him in interviews, like he's such a deep mm -hmm. introspective person. And I'm sure he gets sick of the, for as good. And as much as like, we want to see him be silly and crazy. Yeah. It's also so good to see him act from here too. And it's, yeah, it's great. I hope he gets more roles like that because I think we would all be better for it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And no, I like Jim Carrey, even though people give him a lot of a lot of crap. But yeah, so yeah, Jim Carrey fans. Good recommendation, but that's a good double feature there. Truman Show and um, yeah, and Eternal Spotless of the mind, oh. Spotless Mind. Yes, that would be. Oh, that one's more of a mind bender. Truman uh -huh. Show is pretty laid out, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess slight mind bender, but it's kind of obvious. Yeah. Um, Eternal Sunshine, yeah, is definitely more, you have to, yeah. Pretty much interpret what's going on, you know, uh -huh. it's not really a direct, like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. Well, right. those are all of our recommendations we have for you. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. And if you have any suggestions on films that you think we should see, or that you would like highlighted in the next episode or future episodes, drop a comment below. We would love to see what you think. Um, thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. All right. Thank you. See you, everybody. Bye.